Our treaties are treaties of peace and friendship only. Our rights and responsibilities must be decided at the Grand Council fires, where all the Wollastogawik have a right and a responsibility to gather and participate. Only Wollastogawik can be beneficiaries of the inherent rights that flow from Wollastogawik, <laughs> means the land of the Wollastogawik, or Malazit territory. The Grand Council exists even though there is much to be done to revive the traditional decision-making structure to its adequately functioning state. Indigenous people and the countries in which they live now have a great opportunity to make things right for the future generations through the sincere implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. The spirit and the intent of this worldwide document, it's a foundational document, is to be a guide and to provide guidance to the countries. And countries are expected to amend their laws to accommodate the indigenous rights outlined in these United Nations articles, which are supported by and attached to international human rights tribunal, er, conventions. The relationship in Canada, according to Prime Minister Trudeau, is a relationship, a nation-to-nation -nation relationship. That's what he said. However, <laughs> Indian Act bans are not nations. The term First Nation is deceiving. And, you know, we even hear our own people using that term now. When you hear somebody say First Nation, they're just talking about a reserve. That's what they're talking about. Just a reserve. An Indian Act federal government <coughs> institution called a reserve or a band. That's what a First Nation is. And here we are calling ourselves that. Already the Minister of Indian Affairs, Carolyn Bennett, will only talk to INAC chiefs. And I heard this from the women from another panel here. The same thing. The people are being left out, including the council. Now the INAC chiefs, under the Indian Act, which is what they're elected under, they don't have decision-making power, not even within their respective reserves. They're a chairperson, and if there's a tie within the council, then they can vote to break the tie. Other than that, it's the decision of the majority of the council that makes the decisions. So what are they doing outside of their jurisdiction, making decisions for people behind our backs? That's a question I'd like to know. They have no legal right or decision-making power. Band councils are left out of the process and so are the people. The Department of Indian Affairs and the province of New Brunswick and the INAC chiefs are refusing to include the people of the Mouthy Grand Council. Right <laughs> okay, they shouldn't be holding themselves out to be governments for our people. Treaties must be honored, and the people must have a significant role in all the decisions that are made for our future generations. We don't want to be handed someone else's framework again. We want to set the table. What befalls the earth befalls the women of the earth. When the land and water are ravished and poisoned and destroyed, the women are deeply affected. In our spiritual teachings, we understand that the earth, the moon, women, water, and cedar, they are all aspects of the female side of life. As women, we carry the eggs within our body of the next generation from the time that we're born. As indigenous women, our connection to our homeland is not only physical, it is biological and spiritual. 
We have always been on the front lines when our traditional territories are put at risk. It is time for us to make a better world for everyone. And that must include indigenous people. We were put here on this earth for a reason. And we have the same rights as all other peoples to exist in accordance to our own culture and traditions. Any and all of our rights that have not been ceded and surrendered are just as valid today as they were before colonization. Now all humans were put here with an intel as supposed to be intelligent human beings. <laughs> all were given instructions of how to live on this uh, on the earth. And some of the oldest teachings about how to live on the land comes from our people. We well on that book Eli Bola, well I'm gonna about to weep and eat them galuska. Take only what you need in order to live, said Gluska. Also told us the power of Chimandu is great. He said the land that the Great Beard gave to you you must never leave. And you must never forget your first mother and always show the love you have for her. And we continue to do that today. We hold ceremonies, of different kinds of ceremonies in her honor. And that's where I'll leave it. Yeah. Hopefully.